We start with our newsmaker segment and focus on the gubernatorial race in Kansas. Primary election day is next Tuesday, August 7th. Mm -hmm. Joining us now to talk about her campaign is Democratic gubernatorial candidate, State Senator Laura Kelly. Senator Kelly was elected to the state Senate in 2004. Previously, she served as director of the Kansas Recreation and Park Association. Senator Kelly, welcome to Kansas City and welcome to Ruckus. Mike, it's great to be here. You are the only female candidate in the gubernatorial race on either side. I noticed. Uh, does, yeah, I bet you did. Does that surprise you or disappoint you? Uh, well, you know, given what's going on all over the rest of the country, it is a little bit of a surprise that I'm the only one uh, on the governor's ticket. But, um, you know, it, it's it's fine. Uh, it uh, probably works for me. You see it as an advantage? Uh, I see. I, certainly it uh, helps me stand out, uh, being the only woman there. Uh, but I think it's time, you know, that we bring women back to the table uh, and put them in positions of leadership. As you well know, there's not tons of coverage of state politics in Kansas City or probably most anywhere else in the state. So for people who may be hearing you talk and seeing you at some length for the first time, how would you describe your political philosophy? Are you a liberal, conservative, moderate, center-right, center-left? How would you describe it? I would say uh, common sense and no nonsense. Uh, that uh, I, I tend to drive right down the center of the road. Um, I think my, uh, my trademark uh, is my ability to work across the aisle uh, with my colleagues of the opposite party uh, to really craft uh, good common sense public policy uh, for the I, state of Kansas. I think you've cast some votes that Republicans might like. You've been pretty supportive of expanding gun rights, have you not? Well, uh, for a while I was, you know, and I... I have Are been you a, no longer? I have been a supporter of uh, the Second Amendment right. I think the conversation has changed significantly since uh, some of my earlier votes. Uh, matter of fact, two years ago I voted to ban guns on uh, college campuses, and last year I voted to ban guns in public hospitals like KU, uh, community mental health centers, and public adult care homes. Uh, this past session I voted to take the guns from the hands of people with with domestic violence convictions. I also voted for another uh, slew of amendments uh, that would have really reinstated some gun sense policy uh, in the state of Kansas. If I recall correctly, you voted in support of the Kobach proposed law that became a law that people needed to show proof of citizenship before they could register to vote. Am yeah, I correct? Uh, you are. Uh, Mike, I've always been a, a major supporter of uh, voting rights uh, for folks. I also saw the need to secure elections. Uh, so uh, that vote was meant to do exactly that. Uh, clearly, Chris Kobach took it too far. Well, I was going to ask you, are you concerned, therefore, that it's been overturned by a federal judge? Uh, well, I'm glad that it has. We actually, I co-sponsored a bill in 2016 to repeal it uh, because what we had been promised what happened did not happen, and that was uh, that our Department of Revenue would have in place by 2014 uh, a system that will allow for automatic citizenship check when you go in to get your driver's so license. So you want some, some check on people going up to vote well, for the first I, time? I think we need to make sure that people who are voting are legal, uh, but I, I think this one went too far. I, I know you talk a lot about education and your mm -hmm. support for education. Uh, what needs to be done? More money? Uh, well, we've done that. Uh, Is that know, it? You think enough now? Uh, well, no. The court has said, and, and I would agree with them, that we do need to account for the rate of inflation. Uh, so there's enough money in the bank right now. We did overturn the Brownback Collier tax experiment. And so we've got, we've got some money in the bank, and we can take care of uh, the court's mandate uh, to account for inflation. We can do that in January and continue on. Speaking of Mr. Collier, uh, either he or Kobach, one of those is expected to be the Republican nominee for governor. If you are the Democratic nominee, do you have a preference? Who would you rather run against? I don't think either one of them are particularly good options for the state of Kansas. Yeah, I think oh, but in your campaign, which would be easier uh, for you to defeat? I can, I, can, I can beat either one of them, quite honestly. It would be a different kind of race. Uh, but, you know, we've got Jeff Collier, who really is uh, just Brownback 2.0. Uh, there's not an iota of ideological difference between those two, and we would make that very clear. 
uh, Kobach obviously is Kobach. Got to stop uh, shortly. Uh, can you quickly give me two or three top priorities if you win the election? For yeah, the a absolutely, I can. Uh, clearly, education with the heavy emphasis on early childhood education and then all the way through our higher education system. Uh, that's the biggest economic driver in the state of Kansas, and we need to reinstate our stellar school system. Uh, then I will I will vote to expand Medicaid, uh, providing uh, health care access for 150,000 Kansans and doing a lot to help our rural communities. And then lastly, uh, I will look for ways to create an innovative business environment in the state of Kansas to attract business. Thank you very much for coming in. Pleasure to meet you. It has been a pleasure to be here. Uh, thank you. That is Kansas State Senator Laura Kelly, a Democratic candidate for governor. Now let's meet the panel and start a ruckus.